Hello and welcome to Genealogy Quick Start. My name is Shamel Jordan and I am the host. Today we are doing something we have never done before on this show. Never. As you know, Genealogy Quick Start is available on YouTube, Facebook, and Philly Cam. Today, like I said, we are going to do something that we have absolutely, positively never, ever done before. And we are going to give away prizes. Yes, we're going to give away prizes. You know, we've never, I've never even thought about giving away prizes, but guess what? Jim and Michael insisted. They said, Shamel, we must give away something. We must give away something. So, we want to give away stuff, you know, to thank you because you are YouTube subscribers, because you like us on Facebook, and you watch us on Philly Cam. So thank you so much for that. Um, I'm really happy to have you here today. Um, I have extra special guests. You know, one each show we normally have one person, but we have extra special guests today, and so. You know, it's that time of year where it's really important to give thanks. And I give thanks for you. Um, this has been a very incredible year for Genealogy Quick Start. It's the first time that we've gone live for like a whole season. And if you weren't here, we would not be doing this. And I also want to give thanks because if it wasn't for these two guys, we would not even be going live. So I want to thank my buddies who come on this show faithfully, Michael and Jim, for suggesting that we do this. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are Very you? Very well. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So, you know, this is a great time to uh, give thanks. Um, and I know that Jim has... Um, someone that he definitely wants to give thanks to. And tell us about this, Jim, as I pull it up for us. Well, uh, recently we had uh, Maureen Taylor, the photo detective, as the special guest on the show. Uh, and I decided that was a good opportunity to try to solve a, a photo mystery uh, that had kind of nagged at me for uh, more than more than 20 years. Uh, I had found a, a couple of small, what I would call cameo photos uh, in, in my, my attic, which uh, of course my, <laughs> my house has uh, uh, s seven trunks from uh, various uh, relatives and ancestors. Uh, and the house has been in the, in the family for a, for a hundred years. And based on, the ones who I, my ancestors who I, I know um, that I have photos of, obviously, could be eliminated. There was one couple uh, that that I um, suspected might be. It's not be. those three people you see. No, right. it's definitely not them. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, so I... Oh, uh, and more and Maureen, uh, you know, of course she, she did it right. I just, I just sent her, uh, the, the two photos after, uh, she was on the show with no other information other than, uh, you know, well, no information on the front side and on the back side, uh, that they were taken at the electric photo studio in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, and based on that, she immediately shot back saying, I think between 1900 and 1910 is when th these photos were, were taken. Uh, and of course, I was, was quite pleased because, you know, th that matched the time period that Hiram DeHart and his wife, Sibylla Rauch DeHart, were, were alive. Oh, uh, and I thought, well, let, let me see if I can nail nail this down a little further. Look for the electric photo studio in city directories of Reading. And when it, when I when I did that, uh, I found either the name electric photo studio or the right address 
in Reading between 1899 and 1903 being used as a uh, as a photo studio uh, mm -hmm. with matching the back of the, the photo. Uh, so, so based on that, I mean, like I say Maureen was, was uh, had the right ballpark and now I could narrow it down further uh, between 18, 99 and 1903 which again you know both that both of them were alive both of them were were fairly old uh, so it just it just all makes sense that these are the individuals in the in the photo and because the other way I was doing doing it around is they would have been grandparents to uh, my relative who uh, whose trunk I found them in oh so, okay yeah so, so it really the grandparents yeah. of the trunk yeah, right Right, okay. and her and her other set of grandparents had died, uh, not quite pre-photography, but when it was less common, you know. So, you know, it it just. Uh, you and you know, wrote it, an article about this in your column, Roots and Branches, right? I sure did. So, if yeah. you have the link, I did not do show notes, guys. I'm sorry, I did not do show notes. But if you have the link and you wanted to pop it into the comments anytime, I'm sure people would love to read your column. Yep, and it's real, and it's real easy. You just go to to roots-branches.com, and then you can find uh, the. Uh, current column and as well as an archive of several years worth of columns. So that's fantastic. So the show works. It does. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You, Cause like you say, literally, literally it, 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 it had to be close to 30 years because I remember I had found them when an elder, elderly relative of mine was still alive who would have been a great granddaughter of these folks uh, and had asked her to identify him. And she was, she, I mean, Not she was in, in her, in her defense, she was in her nineties herself, you know, so, yeah, yeah. but, it, but, uh, but I tried without <laughs> prompting her and she, well, who do you want him to be? I'm like, well, no, that's not, that's not really, that's not really where I'm, where that's I'm coming not how this from. Works. Yeah. So I want to say, but, make sure I say hello to all of our, those who have let us know where you are. We have Deborah Ruth is here who just says Yahoo, Yahoo, Deborah Ruth. Um, Kathy from Northwest Ohio. We have Joseph. Hi, Joseph from, Hey, we have Cleveland here. Where's Dr. Debbie? I sent Dr. Debbie a link. Maybe I sent her a link. <laughs> Jenny, how are you in Nebraska? We have Denise in Amsterdam. Hello, Denise. I love Maastricht. I went to Maastricht when I was working there. It was like baby Amsterdam. Um, Snow-covered Maryland. Oh, are you guys suffering down there? How many inches is it dusting? Is it two inches? Oh, my God. No, I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> devastating when anybody gets snow. Hi, Oregon knows about snow. Susan knows about snow. Hello, Joyce in Somerdale. Joyce, did you know Somerdale was rated like one of the top in the top of like the best neighborhoods in the country? Um, Bucks County. Hello, Maria. How are you? Newport News, Virginia. Renata. How are you? West Defford. Hi, Paula. And Renata was born in Cleveland. I remember that because my friend Diane is born in Cleveland and Susan in Bellingham, Washington. Thank you so much. And even if you're not here live and you're watching us in replay, we like to know where you are. So please put down where you're watching from. All right, guys, we got some fun today. Um, I wanted to show you this one. Michael showed has this, has this, uh, we like to find the census. And I was wondering, even as adult, sometimes I really believe that Santa Claus might be real. I really believe that. Sometimes I do. And guess what? Michael found him. Michael, where did you find Santa Claus? He's in Saline County, Missouri. This is the 1930 <laughs> census. You can find him on Find a Grave. I'm pretty sure he's on Find a Grave. Um, this is not one of these erroneous things. He's Santa Claus. You know, you can find him in a variety of census records and other records. He was used the name Santa Claus. How is Santa Claus written? Okay. Well, you know, when you've got all those expenses with elves and toys, <laughs> it's hard on the budget and you've got to cut back somewhere. So, um, 
know, this is also a little distance from maybe this was his summer home. You know, the census was taken in April. Oh. This, this, I'm gonna say this was his summer home in in Missouri. Um, <laughs> We're going we're gonna to use that as our... Uh, okay, that, our we'll time. leave it at that. We will leave it at that. Well, we want to bring on some of our special guests. We know you're waiting to know who they are. Here they come. First, we have Aerie Wilkins. How are you, Aerie? I'm well, thank you. And we have Dean Henry. How are you, Dean? I'm good, Chamel. And we have Jonathan. How are you, Jonathan? I'm good. Hi. So today we are going to do something extra special. We are going to play a game. How many of you have played Kahoot before? Like anybody who uh -huh. hangs around with me for too long has played Kahoot. So in the audience, we also want you guys to play and beat these special guests. Like I'm rooting for you in the audience. So let's get going. We're going to play Kahoot. I'm getting the game going. I'm going to show it to you. So everyone on your phone, go to Kahoot.it. Go to Kahoot, and I'm going to show it to you. Kahoot.it. And I'm locating getting the pin. Just do it on your phone. Okay, I'm going to share the screen so you could see it. Let's see. Yeah, you could do it, Jamal. All right. Go to kahoot.it and you want to put in this game pin number. Everyone do this, 288-9008. Go to Kahoot. And when they ask you for a name, I want you to put in a fun name like Bubba. And I, who's Bubba? Don't tell I, me yet. I have no Don't. idea. I have no <laughs> idea. So everyone, audience, I'm talking to the audience too out there. I want you to play with us too. We have a junior. Just if you want to play, I want everyone to play. Please play with us. Go to Kahoot.it. It won't be as much fun if you don't play on your phone. And not a sure, not a not a sewer. <laughs> Sleepy fam the pearl. I'm loving it. So go to Kahoot.it and put in this code. So that you could play with us. The pin number is this big number here. It's 288-9008. Jonathan, you need a new name. What is that? Unless somebody's <laughs> impersonating you. That's that's me. That's I, you. I thought he was the I thought he was the not a Sue. Yeah. I thought he was the not a Sue too. I thought he was I thought, Bubba. I think that, uh, that could be Sue Kaufman. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's probably good. <laughs> yeah, there should be no PIN number. That should be the only number you need, the, the 288-9008. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we worked back. really hard on these questions, I will have you know. We worked really, really hard Mrs. on Mrs. Claus. Questions. I'm so happy Mrs. Claus is here. So the PIN number is the 288. We're going to get started. And um, Jeannie Grammy, love it, love it, love it. The PIN number is 288-9008. Cincinnati Kid, I'm loving the names. You guys are into this now. Gigi, welcome, Gigi. Your DNA match. I love you. Thank you for coming. Anyone else going to play? Come on. I see there's more. There will more not be time to there. Google the answers. Shamel's going to keep it short. There will not be time to Google the answers. <laughs> no <laughs> time to Google the answers. All right, guys. We're going to actually get going with the game. Anyone that I should be waiting for? Anyone? Anyone? All right. You just, I have just agree. Okay. I think that's fine as long as you put in a name, Maria. You put, went to Big Red. Welcome, Big Red. As long as you've gone to Kahoot.it, it asks you for a pin. Put that in. It says I'm still downloading the game. That's okay. Once you do it, the, the number is actually in here in the uh, comments. So you can put in a 2889008. All right. Let's get going. Let's get going. Let's start the game. So this is game number. And we're going to play this again in the second half hour. So if you didn't get here, you could play again. All right. Multiple choice. Uh, is it coming? It's loading. You have an invisible ancestor. Where is the first place? To <laughs> what is going on? Okay. I haven't had that happen before. Mine says it's still loading. 
Okay. Okay. I'm still what's your, loading. Too. What's your little status bar down there say, Chanel, where that little blue box? I don't have one. This is weird. I don't want to reload it because it might ask me, give me a new pin. Is it still loading for you guys too? Yeah, mm -hmm. it still says, yes. It still says getting ready loading. All right. So while we're waiting, we have these wonderful guests here. If there's any burning question that you have, feel free to type that into the comments. We have Jonathan who knows about everything, especially uh, <laughs> anything at the National Archives, anything all right. military, Jonathan's all over it. Ari knows everything as well. Ari is like federal record queen. She's definitely in those courthouses. I don't know why this game is doing this. This is really weird. If you have a question about Johann Frederick Schnuffermerhaugen, yeah. <laughs> with all those German things, so just you have to spell Schnuffermerhaugen correctly in your question. Uh, but Jim can answer any of those questions if you've got if you got German questions. I am so sad. Mine is still loading. So um this too. I don't know. I don't. I'm really afraid to um, refresh because we might have to put numbers in again. Well, if we do, we do. So, so I have a question for Jonathan. Jonathan, have you oh, heard no. anything yes. that's going on with um, as far as our ability to get records from the National Archives? It's it's a grim situation. Um, the archives had to close up again because of uh, COVID rates rising in the areas where archive facilities are located. So, <clears throat> excuse me, with the exception of a couple small facilities, they're locked up and uh, most of their staff is teleworking. So even when they do open, they'll only be at about a 25% capacity, which means there's really no hope of research uh, occurring anytime this year. That's just completely off the board. Um, I had heard by talking to some executives at the archives that they basically said to me sort of off the cuff, there's no way we're going to be close for another year. I'm going to open in March. Now I kept that statement to myself until I heard it from a third party and I went and had an announced this in social media. Well, I got chewed out yesterday by the COO of the national archives who told me that there's just absolutely no way they're going to be open by March. So that was an aspiration. Okay. Not a, not a promise. Um, they would like to not be closed for another year, but unfortunately, it looks like the federal government's going to remain shut down as far as teleworking and being a standard for quite some time. Um, public services are probably not going to happen anytime soon. Now, they did open to accept FOIA requests. Uh, however, um, their ability to answer them is very limited. Okay. So. You can so submit a FOIA and that, you might right? get a response. I'm sorry. Yep. I did. Say? I did. Um, I did refresh the game. I see some of you guys oh, are okay, yeah. and you did get a new pin. Jonathan did not mean to cut you off. Oh, that's Thank okay. you so much for that information. Um, that's helpful. I mean, I think that, you know, we're all grown ups and we should know that, you know, they're struggling like the rest of us. Um, yeah. Um, are there any things that they have um, implemented to provide us with more like different services, um, like there's, virtual? No, there's very little in the way of public services that they can offer um, other than what they put in their catalog. They've been trying to stuff the catalog with all the stuff they have that they weren't able to get uploaded before. Um, they've been struggling to do that, but they've been successful in getting a lot of stuff online. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, that's anywhere near complete. I mean, they have a long okay. way to go. So. Makes but sense. But they've been, they've been trying. So did you guys all get in? It looks like we have everyone here mostly. So Not me yet. Yes. I need uh -huh. the, oh, never mind. Hold on. I'm coming. Okay. Come on in. Cappy. We have some new names. Cappy, Junior, Mrs. Claus, Cincinnati Kid, Genia, Grammy, Stitches, Gigi, Big Red, Hans Brinker, Sleepy, Bubba, Junior. What happened to Bubba? Now I was afraid have, I jinxed it. That's what happened. <laughs> Riri. Um, I have a cousin named Riri. Um, not a Sue. Johnny D. We got more people coming in. Cool there, is that auntie. a better nickname? Cool, Auntie. It is a better Johnny D. I Making love it. Making progress. So cool. Making right. progress. So we're going to go get started. All right. Please start right this time, gang. Please. Two. Fingers crossed. One. One. 
Oh, there we go. All right, this isn't going to be a good idea. <laughs> this did work when we practiced. I know. <laughs> it did. It did. It worked perfectly then. Yeah. It might. It's be 2020. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. it, it, it's 2020. And of course, that was that was on Zoom that we were practicing. So I don't know if there's some bad interface with StreamYard or. Ah, I didn't think about that. I didn't think of not. I think did I play it on StreamYard? Guess what, guys? I think we have people sneaking into the stream. <laughs> I think we have people sneaking into the stream. Let's see if somebody has snuck into the stream. People sneaking into the stream. Hello, Dyson. Oh. How are you? You made me put on some underwear. <laughs> personality Hello, has arrived. Huh? <laughs> yes, the personality has arrived. <laughs> So it looks like it's going to be absolutely awful with um with with I don't know what's going on with Kahoot possibly because we're playing during school hours it could be like you know I have no idea but and Michael is going to be so upset because he spent all night up all night writing these questions Are we supposed to know the answers you are. So I'm going to ask the questions anyway. Let's play Kahoot where you can't see it. And I'm just going to ask the questions and you guys could type into the um, into the comments and see who gets okay. it first. Okay. All right. So you'll be able to see the questions, um, but you won't be able to don't see all the questions. Let's see. Uh, oh, I have. To, I can't let you see them. I'm going to have to read them to you because you'll be able to see the answers, I think. Put them in the chat. All right, guys, you ready to play? I'm going to hide the questions. All right. Free newspaper websites include red, chronicling, oh, well, I don't have to give you the colors. Chronicling, chronicling America, newspapers.com, genealogy bank, or free Wi Fi at your corner newsstand. Which of these is a free newspaper site? Oh, Renata said it's up now. Not mine isn't. No, oh, my connection was lost. Chronic America, that is the answer. Okay, question number two. German umlauts are? Who? Umlauts. Okay. Are a delicious noodle dish from Bavaria? Two dots over certain vowels, not really German, or especially made instrument much like a tuba. Which one is a umlaut? Am I saying it right, Jim? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Susan said, hard to use. I agree, Susan. Two dots. So a umlaut is indeed two dots. All right. Next question. <laughs> They're good. Natural steps in naturalization process are generally A, stepping off the boat and shouting, I'm here, or getting married and divorced and then married again, or a declaration and a petition for naturalization or participating in two censuses. What are the steps for naturalization? Can you repeat that, please? Sure. Stepping off the boat and shouting, I'm here. First step. Getting married and divorced and married. Or a declaration of intent followed by a petition for naturalization. Or participating in two censuses. What is needed for the natural? All right, everybody. All right, everybody. I am I echoing am. now. <laughs> Records are more likely to be accurate if what is at stake? A free lunch, 
a free dinner, legalities or reputation. Records are more likely to be accurate if what is at stake? A free lunch, a free dinner, legalities or reputation. What you say, audience? We heard money. That's not one of the choices. Reputation. Legality. Can't ever take money out of the equation. Legality is the answer. Next question. Name and uh, excuse me. Every name directories are more likely to be found for cities, rural areas, counties rivers and streams where do you find every name directories more likely don't get michael all upset more likely <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take much some days so yes yeah, city 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 when dealing with conflicting information between two documents you should Never give priority to a handwritten hand. record. Always choose what agrees with family lore. Weigh the greater, wait, weigh greater the evidence on the document created closest to the event or flip a coin. Which is it? How do you know what is right when you have two conflicting documents? The answer, the answer is to weigh greater the evidence on the document closest to the event. Yes, choice three. Thank you, Wilma. All right, next question. The first U.S. income tax, and you know who wrote this question, was Levy, Levy to support, Levy to support the War of 1812, the Mexican well, War, me? Why? the first U.S. tax, no. income tax was levied to support. Wait, I'm trying to hear the question, so go ahead, Shamel. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, still be quiet, I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Sue. I'll get to you in a second. Go the first ahead. U.S. income tax was Levy to support the War of 1812, the Mexican War, the Civil War, or World War I. Why did we have the first income tax? Repeat that, please. The first U.S. income tax was Levy to support War of 1812, the Mexican War, the Civil War. The World War One. Look at you guys. You're so smart. The Civil War. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> the best book on newspapers and genealogy is The Great Little Book of Newspapers, The Family Tree Historical Newspapers Guide, The Great the little great book on newspapers or extra, extra read all about it. <laughs> Who wrote this crazy question? <laughs> of course, I the answer to him, is, I don't know. that's the wrong way. That's the wrong. There we go. <laughs> the <laughs> answer is Jim's book, the family yep. tree historical newspaper guide. All right. Ninth question. The crosshairs of genealogy is location, location, location. <laughs> There's your visual aid. Okay. Place and time. What and why? Or Jim and Michael. What <laughs> is the crosshairs of genealogy? Someone said two. Karen said two. Joyce said B. <laughs> Harry said place and time. You guys are all correct. <laughs> Photo captions written in ink are mostly true, generally false, written before 1940, written after 1940. Photo captions in ink. 
mostly true, mostly false, written before 1940, written after 1940. Did you mean ballpoint pen? Yes. That's what I thought. I, well, Maureen just said, oh, she said pen ink. I think it was ballpoint pen, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, ballpoint pen. <laughs> so the answer would be after in 1940 or after, because that's when ballpoint where ballpoint pens came into. Um, and so the last question, two questions left. Ari Wilkins shared a quick start on probate records, finding enslaved, migration, or none of the above. What did Ari Wilkins share a quick start on? Probate records, finding enslaved, migration, or none of none the of above? People. And Karen, you are right. I wrote that question wrong. Ink could have meant a quill pen. <laughs> so the answer for Aerie, anyone else want to guess on Aerie? She does talk on finding an enslaved. She does talk on the probate. But when Aerie came on the show, she talked about none of those things. Aerie, what did you do a quick start on? We did it on federal records. Yes, federal yeah. records. All righty. That is the last question. And we have one more person I'm going to add to the stream. Woohoo! Hey, Sue! Uh, oh, girl! Hey, Sue! Hi, Sue! <laughs> How are you? We can't hear you. She's muted. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. I'm a muter. Sue, unmute your mic. Oh. Wait, I just muted her. Okay, okay, now I did. I was in the other place. Hi, Sue. Welcome. Hi, Sue. Place. <laughs> Look, oh, wait. Here's my, my holiday stuff. Oh, yay. I love it. I love I just it. Came from, I just came from another presentation where it was required. Do you guys know Tom Neal at OGS? Yes. You should have seen him all dressed up for the holiday. He had, he had a, what you call it, thingy, the... What do you call that stuff? The well, I don't use it because I have cats. <laughs> the yeah. glitter, tinsel? not the tinsel, but the the tinsel. long one. The long icicles. Garland? No, Those not icicles? the icicles. Huh? Garland. Not the, the garland. This is look, this yeah, my, yeah, this yeah. my genealogy quick start question. <laughs> garland. Garland. Yeah. <laughs> it was all dressed up. Very cool. cool. Very very cool. So. Sue, welcome to the gang. We Thank you have, for having me. Um, we have Kahoot issues, which I have to figure out at some point. You can't <laughs> play Kahoot. But um, I want to, um, uh, first, Michael had someone to give thanks to. Um, so we wanted to make sure like that we give thanks during this holiday season. And um, I asked you guys to all like give us, um, think of, you know, during this year, a lot has happened and there's so much to be thankful for. And I know that having you guys on this show is something that I definitely give thanks for. You've given your time freely. So thank you for that. But I wanted to also, I'm sure that there is there are other genealogists out there, presentations, things that you've read or have attended that gave you a spark that you know, helped you with your research. So I want you to think about that while Michael shares with us something that happened with him. So Michael, talk to us about um, what happened on this show for you. Well, after Michael Strauss talked about military records, I was motivated and we were focusing on things that were online because that's one of the rules you tell us that we have to have things that are usually online. So I I went to looking at for this individual. He, he died as a young man during the during the Civil War, and um, when the image comes up, he was buried in Vicksburg. But it was this is Santa Claus, by the way, who was not. <laughs> Sorry, oh, there uh, he. And he's buried in he's buried in Vicksburg. But I'm not sure it shows up on this. I'm pointing at the screen. You can't see me do that. But a lot of these guys were unknown. If you look over on the right, where it says name or number, they're unknown. But the dude I was interested in, James F. Rowe here, 
there's some arrows and a notation that his body was found across the river in Louisiana. It gives the name of the widow's farm. I think it's the widow's groves plantation. And he was found and on his person, he had a bottle of, an empty bottle of quinine, empty quinine bottle. And in that bottle was identifying information about him. That was how they identified him based on what was in his bottle. Um, about, I think he was about 20 years old. He was a medic or something, if memory serves, in a similar capacity. Um, but I was just motivated to go do a little more digging around. This was on was on Ancestry, um, you know, kind of focusing on when we have the preps for this. Shamel is always, um, so I was going to say the nagging word, but suggesting. Yeah, I need to get close up so I can look you in the eye. Shamel uh, is always yeah. what? we have online things and this this was an online document that i found which on the one hand is really kind of sad but i was very fortunate that he was identified because a lot of those guys as you saw in that register were not they were just you know um, bodies they had found they could not identify so i was fortunate to find that so you <laughs> found that on family search this was on ancestry oh it was on ancestry, ancestry. okay yeah okay all right, you guys ready to play another game of Kahoot? Then you guys could tell us what you're thankful about, and it's going to be like the the fake Kahoot. I'm so disappointed. Oh my god! Does All that right. mean we don't get prizes? I got to figure that one out. I really <laughs> do. I don't know how I would do that. Kahoot, Kahoot scored everybody. We'll have to see if we can. Debbie, finish. don't leave though. You can stay. <laughs> I thought I was getting a prize. <laughs> 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 Maybe with Sue here, I'm going to try it one more time. And if it doesn't work, then we'll just play it the regular way. I just really want us to play one game. Maybe the kids are out of school now. <laughs> All righty. So you're going to be nice to me now, Kahoot. You're going to play like you know how to play. Does talking to it help? Okay. Yeah. It's like talking to your ancestors. It's like talking to a plant. <laughs> a cat. I talk what did, what's wrong with talking to plants? I talk to my plants all the time. Your Nothing's plants are your friends. Do they answer? Bubber tried. Yes, they do, especially when they need water. If you know how to mine just them. tells me it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> How does it tell you it's dead? It says don't try anymore. Just leave me alone. Because <laughs> the, the obituary is on find a grave before she even exactly it. <laughs> before you even know it's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Before you, she even knows it's dead, somebody has uh, put an obituary on find a grave. Ouch. In public yeah. domain. We know. <laughs> what is this funny. coming up? Are these people's names or what? Oh yes. Yeah. So Sue, yeah. go to kahoot.it. We're going to try on your phone. And we're going to try and play the game. Okay, um, I'm not seeing the pin. So Thanks for letting me know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm sorry. I couldn't do it when she did it before. So so wait a minute. I'm supposed to go to Kahoot. How do you spell it? And enter the pin number. Wait a minute. One. Oh, sorry. Oh, I got a notification that I'm in. If that means uh, anything. Kahoot.it. Okay, go. Wait a minute. On my phone. Mm-hmm. Okay, free online play. No, oh, wait a minute. Four, nine, it should ask you for a pin, like a box for a pin. Game pin. Kahoot.it. So I guess that not a Sue was not Sue. <laughs> it was not a Sue. If I go to Kahoot. Oh, www. Or join with the Kahoot app. Yeah, no, don't. I would. I Are just you doing it website. on your phone? Yeah. So just go to kahoot.it, not in your .com. browser. In your browser. I'm in my browser. I feel like Debbie. Oh, Kahoot. <laughs> Look, I, I already gave up. I don't know that we're going to actually be able to spell it wrong. I spelled it wrong. That was the problem. Hang on. Okay. We're wait for, we're hey, what's the pin now? Um, oh, I got it. I see it. Wait a minute here. Wait a second. Okay. I feel so old with my glasses to it. It's okay. 
Okay. And don't be disappointed if the game pop uh, uh, bombs out. Nickname. Nickname. Yay, okay. she's smoking alone. Texas girl. No, Susan no, I'm Cat from Illinois. Mom. Look, there I am. Cat mom, cat mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to try and start this again. Everybody cross your fingers, toes, and hairs. And your paws. And your paws. Thank you. Thank you. And claws. Okay, get ready. It says on my phone. Oh, I totally okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, Who admitted the they gave incorrect information on their father's death certificate in Pennsylvania? Red for Jim, blue for Shamel, yellow for Michael, or green for Michael Leclerc? Who admitted they gave the wrong information on their father's death certificate? And the answer is... Jim Bidler. So let's see what the leaderboard looks like. I cannot even see. There we go. Texas girl is on top, Jimbo, followed by Cat Mom, Bubba Tired, and Johnny D. Next Texas question. Girl. Where was the fur fire that affected U.S. military records? Red, D.C., Blue, St. Louis. Yellow Arlington or Green Annapolis, Maryland? Where was the fire that affected U.S. military records? And the answer is St. Louis, Missouri. How many got that right? Mostly everyone. That's my hometown. Uh oh, Cat Mom is taking the lead. Texas Girl holding on, Johnny D, and three times a char. And Jimbo. <laughs> Next question. Which state is not part of New England? Red, Vermont, blue, Massachusetts, yellow, New York. New York. You're not supposed yes. to get out loud. Green, Rhode Island. Which state is not a part of New England? New York, Dr. Debbie was right, even though she was cheating. Let's see what our scoreboard looks like. Okay, Texas girl and cat mom on the top, third time to char. Everybody's holding on to their spots. Next question. During Dean Henry's episode on underutilized records, which other guest was included? Was it red, Roberta Estes, B, blue, Debbie Abbott? Yellow boat or green neither? Who was also on the episode with Dean Henry on underutilized records? The answer is Roberta Este. Mm. <laughs> and scoreboard, mm. Cat Mom still holding on, still holding mm. on. Let's move on to the next question. When searching for name variants, one approach is to ignore. Red, big letters, blue, consonants, yellow, the letter R, or green vowels. What approach should you use when searching for name variants? Ignore what? Ignore vowels. You guys are so smart. Wonderful. How's the board looking? How's the board looking? Cat Mom and Texas Girl are holding on to the top of Jimbo and Cincinnati Kid are moving up. Next question. The Big Genealogy Library in Utah has a website named w oh, utahgenealogy.com, familysearch.org, biggenealogylibrary.com, or microfilmonline.com. What's the name of that website for that big genealogy library in the mountains? Everyone got that right mostly? It's familysearch.org, the best place to go. And look at that leaderboard. Look at that leaderboard switching around a little bit, but basically about the same. Next question. Which U.S. census indicates the informant? Was it the 1920 census, the 1790 census, the 1900 census, or the 1940 census? Um. 
And the answer is the 1940 census shows the informant. All right, let's go to the next, see what the leaderboard looks like. I keep losing my mouse. I hate that. All right, Cat Mom is on flames. Texas girl still on top. Big Red is moving up. Cincinnati kid followed by three times a char. All right. Next question. During a Stu Kaufman episode, other guests included Blaine Bettinger, Debbie Abbott, Tim Pinnock, or none of the above. Who else was on Sue Kaufman's episode? Who else was on the episode? And the answer is Dr. Debbie Abbott was on that episode. And let's look at the scoreboard. Looks like it's exactly the same. Let's move to the next question. Sharon Gillen shared a quick start on probate records, the genealogy proof standard, Freedman's Bureau, or none of the above. What did Sharon Gillen share a quick start on? Freedman's Bureau. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. <Doctor's> <laughs> <laughs> and the answer, if you didn't hear already, is <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't help yourself. All right. Next question. The original U.S. Homestead Act was enacted during which war? The Mexican War, the Spanish-American War, the Civil War, or the Philippine-American War? When was the original U.S. Homestead Act enacted? And the answer is during the Civil War. Everything happened during the Civil War. And let's see that leaderboard. Johnny D's moving up, moving up. Oh, I suck at this game. <laughs> <laughs> the, reverse, the reverse portion of a city directory lists people by address, zip code, <laughs> or first name. Well, how's that word reverse? portion of the city directory list people. <laughs> <laughs> By address. That's what a reverse is. All right. Address. So let us see what the board looks like. All right. We're still the boards moving around. Johnny D and Cincinnati Kid are moving up. All right. Next. Last question. The genealogy vigilante group, which Jonathan Webb these is on to a vigilante it. now. <laughs> genealogy matters. Record source. Reclaim the records or public domain records. Reclaim the records. <laughs> we're a we're a vigilant committee, not you know. Oh, vigilant. This is like yeah, my four year vigilant, old a vigilance committee. <laughs> <laughs> did you really want it to say vigilante? I did. Yeah, yeah, so we don't. We don't run around with clubs and. Like, All right, let's look at the podium of who won. Johnny D. Okay, is yay! Texas girl is number two, and number one, we know who that is. I didn't even answer the list. So who is Texas girl and who is Bubba and who is Big Red? I need to know who they are. Texas girl. Don't who admit it. Texas girl. Texas girl. And who were the other two? Bubba and Big Red. Because you guys are the act. Because I think Johnny D is Jonathan, right? Mm -hmm. Cat Mom is um, Sue. Yeah. Whoever Texas girl is, you win a prize. And so we need to know who you are. What about me? Put your you hand. don't win anything. <laughs> special mention. Okay. <laughs> it's a special mention. <laughs> you won by us allowing you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> who was Bubba? Who was Bubba? I was Bubba. Okay, so you can't win. I know. So Texas girl wins and Big Red. Who's Big Red? Do they win a prize? Yes, that's when you I'll win the prizes. I'll be Big Red. <laughs> What's the prize? I'm trying to win a prize. 
We need you your can't name. win a prize. You know that we can't win prizes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sister <laughs> and Big Red, please let us know who you are so that you can get your prizes. So, guys, we have a couple minutes left. I would definitely love to hear anyone who's had some a good breakthrough this year based off of information from another genealogist who would like to share. And you get a minute. That's a dig at me. Okay. <laughs> 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 so I'll go first. Um, I mentioned when I was on your show before that I was admitted to the Sons of the American Revolution. But again, a shout out to my cousin, Stephanie Miller. So uh, yes, yeah, Stephanie's going to be on uh, DaughterDialogues.com. They're going to have a show January 14th, 2021. She's going to be on with other um, women of color that are members of DAR, along with Joyce Mosley. And a shout out for her book. It was recently released called Graham's Gift, where, where this woman tells her grandchildren about her family. So Stephanie uh, helped our family figure out where we are in the family tree as a descendants of a uh, patriot. Very cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice. Come patriot. <laughs> Very nice. Anyone else? Well, I've I've had a, a lot of good experiences this Besides year. Besides Jim, huh? <laughs> you already what? gave us one, Marlene. Marlene. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. You didn't tell me I couldn't so, go again. So. Okay. I, well, you know, I I I actually am only. I mean, I most people know that I don't do much research. First of all, I'm only third generation American. Okay, so I mean, and I'm back. I mean, I only go back to like 1904. So I've done a lot of stuff on this side, but, and Debbie's just going to be, I mean, my big shout out actually is to Debbie because, you know, she always talks about writing your own story. And so I have um, <coughs> did her presentation and I've done a lot of stuff on social history and I did get to put together some of my own story just by finding stuff on the internet that brought back a lot of memories for me. For me of when I was growing up and like a picture of O'Hare airport in 1960, you know, and, and what it looked like and, and things like that. So um, I would like to shout out for Debbie to make, to helping us not to forget that we have to write about us along with everybody else behind us. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank Ari you. Ari or, Ari. Um, or Jonathan. Uh, I had a, great um a great year i've kind of taken a back seat to doing like uh, uh in-person research this year because everything's closed and of course what you can do online is you know anybody can do that so i've but i've been doing lots of consulting and lots of uh work with the trying to talk to archivists and librarians and trying to get to see what's going on in that that world so i've gotten a lot of good feedback um things have changed for you know uh, for reclaim the records we got a huge donation this year and so mm -hmm. we can really ramp up our activities and take it to a next to the next level. And we're going to have some partnerships maybe to announce soon. Some mm -hmm. some, some really good stuff is going to be going on to to basically uh, get some records for some really underserved communities, uh, not just places where records managers are goofing around, but places where records are really sort of unknown, hidden. Um, cryptic we're gonna we're gonna really dig into some good stuff and we're gonna make some uh, some big announcements before the end of the year hopefully and 2021 will just be you know one good thing after the other we hope mm -hmm. lots of good stuff coming up fantastic airy um i think one of the things i was most inspired with was sharon gillen's presentation with the freedmen's bureau and it made me just want to dig even deeper and get more and more immersed into those records and I've just found myself sitting, especially because we're able to access them through family search, going page by page and not just looking for my ancestor, but everybody in that community and what was going on around them. And just knowing that there's so much more than just one type of record, but so many different types of records. And so I really appreciated Sharon's uh, presentation in your episode on Freedmen's Bureau, because it just it inspired me to keep digging more and more. Just when you think you got the, the hang of it, you're like, no, I can spend a whole nother decade in these records. Fantastic. Dr. Debbie. Debbie. Well, let me think about it. See, that's how she take over. <laughs> 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 
Um, I I've spent a couple of times listening to Robin Smith. Oh yeah, and uh, listening to her talk about uh, land records and deeds and so forth has been really good for me. I haven't been doing a whole lot, just in case you don't know. I haven't been feeling that well, so I haven't been I doing haven't a, whole a whole lot that that, that I that need I to be doing. But um, I appreciate all of you. I appreciate, I appreciate everything you do because sometimes you all are dragging me along <laughs> and I'm not leading anybody. So I appreciate all, all of you. And uh, Sue knows she and I share some dental stories and all, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So I got to tell you about this last one. And other than that, I think, I'm just lucky to be here and I'm lucky to have, I'm going to say this out loud too, somebody like Mark Lowe, I did a lecture on Saturday and he called me Saturday night and he said, get to the hospital quick. Okay. And I said, why? He said, cause you're sick. Get to the hospital quick. And I did. He was right. I was sick. Yay for Mark Lowe. No, I'm all right. I'm all right now. But I'm glad you're all right, Dr. Yeah, Debbie. He, he said you sound like I ain't gonna use the word. <laughs> he said Thank you, Dr. Debbie. Incoherent. Couldn't string one up to another. He said, go to the hospital. Well, I'm glad. I'm gonna call Mark. I'm gonna text Mark after this and tell him thank you for that. Yes. I want to give I thank you to um Frank Smith. I have wanted to hang out with Frank for a long oh, yeah. time. I forgot about and that. And when I saw Dr. Debbie all hugged up on him when we were down <laughs> in Houston, I said, I'm going to separate them and I'm going to get in there and I'm going to know Frank. And Frank share, showed me share, showed me something that had that is a part of his research, that is a part of my research as well, that I bet is a part of so many other people's research that has spawned something in me that is going to create something that is, I can't wait to share it with everyone. Okay. Um, it's going to really um, help, help help people to get closer to where they want to be when they're looking for their enslaved ancestors. And so and just so like Jonathan says, you know, a lot's coming out with Reclaim the Records next year. Same here with Black genealogy, the Freedmen's Bureau, all kinds of things are happening. And some of it's going to start with Sue um, at Clayton Library. So everyone, um, I definitely need to know Big Red. Big Red? Oh, Texas Girl. I have Big Red. I need Texas Girl. Texas Girl, please email genealogyquickstart at gmail.com so that we can get you your prizes. And congratulations to Texas Girl and Big Red for uh, winning. Um, and uh, Ari, are you Texas Girl? <laughs> Why didn't you say that before? <laughs> trying to hide. <laughs> you All can right, run, but you can't hide. I, uh, Shmel, I, I, I just wanted, I, Shmel, I just wanted to thank you for everything that you've done for the kids. Yes. You know, and you, Jim, mm. and John, and you know, all of us, and uh, everything that everybody else has done, and. I'll mention to Frank, I don't know if he's here, but I'll mention to Frank, and Frank is retiring in two weeks. Is he having a party? He doesn't want a party. What about if you tell him I'm going to fly down? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we got to cut right, it the wrap. Thank you, guys, everyone who joined us. Um, everyone have a great year. We will be back in January. Look for Look all of our guests. And Dr. Debbie's going to do a full quick start all by herself. So, <laughs> thank you guys in 2021. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Bye-bye.